Hi, welcome back. Adam Rosen here. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Today, I want to continue to expand on some slightly different topics than just knee replacement stuff, but I'll be adding more videos about that. What some of you may not be aware of is that during COVID, I created a podcast, actually two podcasts. One I had thought about for a while, it was an educational podcast for orthopedic residents and fellows um, talking about joint replacement things, very technical things. But in doing so, I thought maybe I should create a podcast for patients because with COVID, a lot of doctor's offices were shut down and patients didn't have access and a lot of these simple questions that they wanted answers to, um, they couldn't find. So I have a podcast. I haven't updated it recently, but it's called Your Knee, Your Health, um, and you can find it on all the major platforms. And I'm going to start sharing some of that information here. Um, this was an episode that uh, went up April 29th in 2020 on osteoporosis. So what is osteoporosis? Osteoporosis and osteoarthritis, two different things, but somewhat similar because they both can affect older people. Um, as people age, they can get either or or both. But my patients sometimes are concerned that one causes the other or vice versa. So osteoporosis is a weakening of the bone. And if you look at it microscopically, it almost looks like um, a porous sponge or if you've ever picked up a piece of coral from the ocean. And as we age, the spaces can get bigger as the structure gets weaker and that can lead to brittle bones and what we call fragility fracture. So 10 million Americans have weak bone or osteoporosis and what they've determined um, and I'm going to put a, a link in there. It was previously called the National Osteoporosis Foundation. Now their new name is Bone Health and Osteoporosis Foundation. So I'll put a link in there. A lot of great information. But what they found was 54 million Americans, that's half of all Americans over the age of 50, are at risk of having a fragility fracture. And I've talked about this in a lot of different ways too. And I try to make people understand that it's not just a broken bone. Um, if you watched my episode on hip fractures, that this is a deadly disease that patients that break their hip from a fragility fracture can wind up in the hospital and can die during that hospital visit or die in the next year. And if you are in the hospital with a broken bone and then have a heart attack or a kidney issue, those three different systems, bone, heart, kidneys, that's technically what we would call multi-system organ failure. So when people are admitted with a stroke or a heart attack, that's serious. But think about a hip fracture as just as serious. And our goal is to try to prevent the bone from getting brittle in the first place. And in doing so, trying to prevent you from having a fracture. So um, what should you think about? So I always tell people that think of your skeleton as a bank. So your bank, you store money. And in your skeleton, you store calcium. And calcium is what we want to get in there. Um, and if you're old enough to um, have osteoporosis, and I remember doing this, filling out the, the teller slips. I don't think anybody even goes in banks very often anymore. You do it all on your phone, or maybe you go to a money machine um, and use your card. But you fill out your teller slip, and you gave them your money or your check, and they deposited it into your bank account. So think of vitamin D as the teller slip. You could eat and drink and take all of the calcium supplements that you want, but if you don't have that teller slip, the vitamin D, it is very hard and difficult for your body to then transfer that calcium into your bones. So that is why the vitamin D is a really important part. And depending on your age, the typical thing over 50, over 60 is 600 to 1,000 international units. So you'll see vitamin D not in milligrams, but in international units or IUs. And that's the recommended daily allowance. So do you need a supplement? Well, what do you eat? So things that are rich in vitamin D, things would be like fatty fishes, um, eggs, cheese, dairy products, especially fortified dairy products. Mushrooms are high in um, vitamin D. So if you're eating a lot of those, maybe your vitamin D is okay. But it's an important thing that I always tell my patients you know what your cholesterol is and you know what your blood pressure is. You should know what your vitamin D is. And if your vitamin D is normal, what you're doing is great. And if it's a little low, your doctor might talk to you about taking these daily supplements if you're not already on them. If you're already on them and low, sometimes we will put people on 
high dose is what we call 50,000 international units. It's a once weekly pill for a period of time to get the vitamin D up. Um, now, at some point, if you're putting money in the bank, you will retire. At least that's the goal. And you will start making withdrawals and taking money out of the bank. So you want enough money in there so when you start pulling money out, you don't run out of money. And think of your bone health is the same, that you want to do everything you can when you're younger to build up the calcium in your bone. So as we get older, because as we get older, we will start pulling out calcium. If you're female and you go through menopause, you're going to pull out calcium. So they get the double whammy. And if you have some systemic illness, um, sometimes you'll lose even more vitamin D. So you want to try to get that in early to get the calcium and your vitamin D levels up so you have a nice store of calcium. So as we age and we start pulling the calcium out, you don't get down here too quickly, which is the brittle bone area of osteoporosis. And then you'll say, what about osteoporosis and osteopenia? So think of normal bone, osteoporosis bone. In the middle is what we call osteopenia. And that's sometimes where we'll catch people that haven't gone into full-blown osteoporosis and maybe are low in vitamin D, they can get supplementation, maybe they need a weight-bearing exercise program, and they might avoid the need for um, some of the prescription medicines that we use for osteoporosis. That's a longer discussion that maybe I'll save for a different video. Um, but be smart, because if you don't invest when you're younger, you won't have any money in the bank for retirement. Um, so if you're younger and you drink a lot of alcohol, if you smoke, um, if you have poor nutrition, all of those are risk factors for having low vitamin D, which in turn can lead to low calcium in the bones, which in turn can lead to osteoporosis. So hopefully this answers the questions, at least in a format or a way that you can understand the importance of diet and nutrition and vitamin D and possibly the need for supplementation if you're not already taking it. But again, always talk to your doctor. Find out what your vitamin D is. Uh, make sure you've been screened for osteoporosis if you're of the age or of a category of risk if you haven't been screened before. Um, work on exercises, specifically balance. So exercise classes that focus on balance and things like Tai Chi um, can be very, very helpful to prevent the risk of falls. Look for things in your house like throw rugs or cords that can be a tripping hazard, which can lead to falls. And always eat healthy, be safe, exercise, be well. Thanks again for listening. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Um, if you enjoy this information, uh, please click the thumbs up button. It lets people like you find information like this. I'm Adam Rosen. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe.